it's a nice piece of information to know. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna talk about the secret uh, life of food, small bites, planetary impact. Um, I, before I uh, go into the crux of the matter, I want to share with you uh, a little bit about how I got to where I am. So, um, like all the other fellow, I did time in all the correct uh, leafy northeastern universities, um, <laughs> a, acquiring the appropriate skills. In my in my case, it's applied mathematics. But um, well before that took place, I grew up in a kibbutz, which is an agricultural commune in Israel. So this is this is not from my uh, uh, class, but I, I just thought. This looks like young Malcolm Gladwell, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but this, this is actually a shot directly from outside uh, my window, so to speak. And um, when I was about uh, 16, there was a war, one of the wars that periodically erupts in Israel and in, the, in that part of the world. And we were in charge, the kids were in charge of the entire uh, farming operation for about six uh, weeks. And this is what the, uh, the dairy farm, which was the essence of my life uh, at the time, uh, looked like. And that left um, a, a lifelong impression on me. So think about uh, like a fortune cookie question. What do you get when you cross 80% or roughly 80% numerical expertise with about 20% of farming know-how. Well, you get me, that's it. Um, and w so what I do is numerical analysis of food production's uh, impact uh, on the geophysical environment. And it's worth reminding ourselves that when you sink your teeth into an apple here, let's say in Camden, well, you set up uh, a, a power plant somewhere, and you set up a, a, a fertilizer uh, plant somewhere else. And by doing that, you truly alter the, the geophysical system. So, you know, for example, the way the earth and the sun exchange, um, exchange uh, heat and so on. Um, so that's, that's essentially uh, what I do. The, the thing that I'm best known for, I guess, for those who know me, um, is the quantification of how important is the, uh, the animal-based part of the mean American diet, which you can see how it is aptly named here, um, acronymed. So what we showed, actually, is, is that when you take two people, one eating the mean American diet, typical mean American diet, and the other eating only plants, but the same number of calories, the difference between them is about a ton and a half of CO2 per person per year. And if you multiply that by the number of Americans, you get this much savings. Now, this is shown against the backdrop of all the other things that make up the national uh, um, portfolio of greenhouse gases. And you see, for example, that the expected uh, savings from doing that switch, from going from the mean American diet to eating plants, that savings alone essentially wipe out the entire footprint of agriculture in terms of greenhouse gas. It's a, it's a staggering number. And when you think about all the changes that you can possibly do to make a difference, assuming you want to make a difference, there are very few such low-hanging fruit out there. Um, I don't really have that much time to, to talk about uh, why we uh, went next to, to the next uh, issue, which is reactive nitrogen. I'll just show you uh, the, um, the crux of the matter, actually, which is right around here. Um, so reactive nitrogen is, unlike um, uh, atmospheric nitrogen, which is not biologically available, reactive nitrogen is one that is. And uh, it is, is uh, the major cause of water pollution in, throughout the world, really. Uh, this came out very poorly for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, so let me actually, and this doesn't work in addition. So let me show you what, what goes on here. Um, we asked this. We asked, how, how much resources does it take to feed a person per year in terms of, on the horizontal axis, 
the amount of land the person demands, and on the vertical axis, the number of reactive nitrogen pounds that it is responsible for. And on the lower left, you see the pure, bland, uh, pure plant diets, vegan diets. And each dot, there's, there's 2,000 dots here, and the difference between them is not important. You can think about them as 2,000 people subsisting for a year on plants alone. That's in the lower left. Uh, on the upper right, is the same number of 2,000 people eating the mean American diet. And you can see that you have, you can drop your uh, reactive nitrogen demands to, or, or, or let's say you go from pure plant diets to, to the mean American diet. You up your uh, reactive nitrogen demands 340%. And similarly, uh, when you ask how much land do you need, well, 71% more land is needed if you eat the, uh, the mean American diet. So that is the, the essence of uh, the work. And now when you ask yourself, can those mathematical tools that I didn't describe but that we uh, developed along the course of that be brought to bear to really change the way this country feeds itself and by extension the world feeds itself? itself. Uh, this paper exactly addresses that. It, it devised a mathematical framework for doing that. But the upshot is really, really simple, even if you know nothing about math and optimization and so on. The upshot is really simple, very simple. No matter what is it that you want to optimize, if it's water or reactive nitrogen discharge or land use and on and on and on, eat plants and try to eat as little animal products uh, as you can. And legislatively, you see the topic of this, uh, of this paper, try always to favor uh, public officials and specific legislations that, f uh, that favor, pl uh, that, that remove the artificial advantage that uh, animal-based foods have in this country. Thanks a lot.